everyone. I'm back and I'm at it again and I'm really excited and I'm going to jump right into this video today because I have a very special guest on here today for all of you and her name is Kathy and uh, she is so lovely. She's going to give you guys some really valuable information out there about narcissism and really what is going on with these people. Uh, she's got so much stuff she's going to, she's going to share with you guys. And, um, we probably, you know, we're, I'm probably going to have her on a few times just because I love the way she thinks. And, uh, I like how she has intellectually put this stuff together for you guys to understand how narcissists work. And without further ado, there she is. <laughs> Kath. Great. So happy to have you on. So Kathy, you guys, is an author as well as a leadership coach. You've had, uh, you've done leadership coaching for how many years? Over 20 years. Oh my goodness. And she is the author of the book. Let's see if I can get this up here, if I know what I'm doing. She's author of this book you have right here, which I did not, I didn't do it. Um, here it is. <laughs> it's called The Empowered Job Search. And, uh, it's a, an excellent book that I would recommend to anybody out there. You want to say a little bit about that, Kath? Yeah, sure. So the book is about kind of turning the job search in what is a really narcissistic world and job market into a much more easeful, even pleasant, dare I say, fun at times experience it's all about how you tap into your gifts and your strengths and work with your growing edges and challenges and vulnerabilities to really find fulfilling work in a world that needs us all contributing what we're meant to. So where can people find this book, Kathy? It's really anywhere you get books. It's on Amazon for sure and other book sites. Awesome. And so, yeah. And so Kathy, we've known each other, what now, like five, almost five years. So, uh, I just love the way you think, and I'm so happy you came on the show today. And, uh, you know, you and I have had some in-depth conversations about these narcs and what they do and how they operate and how they affect people. And so I just love your take on them. And I would love for you to just share with everybody your knowledge and wisdom on these people. Uh, it's, it's, it's always great to have different takes on the channel of what people think is going on out there with these people and what they're doing to us. So, um, yeah, again, thank you for coming on the channel and this is exciting because we've been talking about this for a while now, but we finally made it happen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Trace, for having me and also being such a teacher of mine around narcissism. I've benefited immensely from your super deep, comprehensive understanding that's always growing. I know you're always having new eurekas and putting more together. So I'm, I'm very grateful and so happy to be here. So I have been studying narcissism for over 30 years, and I didn't even know it. Um, I grew up in a family um, that was beyond the pale narcissistic. Almost every member of my primary family, some of my grandparents were narcissists. A couple were sociopaths. I actually don't distinguish at this point between narcissism and sociopathy. My experience is that most true narcissists are in some way behaving sociopathically, but there were definitely a couple of members of my family where it was much more obvious um, what was going on with that. So I really was trying to understand who everyone was, why I felt so different for many years, and then launched into building friendships and don't you know, <laughs> um, encountered sort of one after the next, still didn't really realize what was happening and was really taking the wrong medicine that it was me 
Um, and certainly I was contributing in my lack of awareness, but not in the ways I was being told. So for many, many years, I was just sort of collecting all this data and information and not sure what to do with it. Then I became a leadership coach and I started to see, wait a second, what's the opposite of leadership? It's narcissism, it's sociopathy. And so I read People of a Lie when I was in my early 20s. This is many years yes. ago. Yes. I still have not read that book, by the oh, way. You must read it. I mean, I some know. of it's outdated, but it's really seminal. And he really takes sort of the spiritual approach, which is where I've landed. But I really started to look at, like, what is true leadership? And I'm not just talking about, like, if you're a CEO, though I work with many CEOs, I work with people who are you know, fresh out of college and all the way in between that and CEOs looking at a process I call self-leadership, which is how do you really access all your goodness and your gifts and deal with how crazy and, and challenging the world can be. And so I started to see through my work this relationship between narcissists in positions of power and leadership and how it was really the opposite of leadership. And I actually, for many years, coached narcissists. I developed a program, believe it or not, um, to sort of rehabilitate, which now sounds very cute because we sort of know now, like at least with what we know currently, there's no way to do that. Yeah. But at the time, I did not know that. So you didn't really know at the time this was all going on and you were developing this, that this was actual like narcissism. You just knew that there's something similar about these people. And you can't quite put your finger on it just yet. <laughs> that was exactly it. I then proceeded to have a series of relationships with narcissists and then a big kahuna narcissist, sort of the ultimate sociopath, possibly bordering on psychopath, where I started Googling. So this was about ooh, 12, 13, 14 years ago, and there was nothing to be found, or at least that I found online. So I was like, oh, what is this? So I still didn't understand it. And it wasn't until about 2016, 2017, that I started to put the pieces together. And it was like a massive. Me too. That was like, oh, you too. Yeah, that was yeah. around the years because that's when all these people started coming forward. Yeah. And then at, on the online. And then that's when, like, it was, yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah, we're on the so same it was on the one hand, it was comforting in the sense to have like a name for it and say like, oh, wow, this has been going on for like many decades in my life. And on the other hand, it was really hard because I think ultimately what we're tasked with in dealing with narcissism, in confronting it, is accepting the existence of evil and accepting what is driving evil and coming to terms with given what evil is, what's driving it, what we need to do as human beings to still live our best, you know, most fulfilled life. And as I know, you know, it ain't easy. <laughs> oh my God, no. Oh my God, no. Wow. So, okay. So at this time, so you were still involved intimately with a narc at this time. You were getting all this information and it was all yeah. starting to come together at what yes. you saw going on with the people you were working with. Yeah. Um, him, family, right? Yeah. It was literally the pieces of the like, puddles that were coming together. Completely. Like every sort of level of relationship which I know, you know, we, we all can maybe relate to because you start to see like, oh, wow, it's all around me. Luckily, not everyone was a narcissist, but there was a lot of it. And I started to really understand particularly covert narcissism. So I had been raised by both covert and overt, but the big sort of sociopath in my family 
was an overt narcissist and they're really horrifying to deal with, but like everyone hated him. And so there was a validation around that. And then as I, I graduated levels in dealing with narcissism, the person I was in a relationship with was just a super covert, fooling people um, left and right. And that brought my level of understanding and my investigation of how do these individuals really, you know, pervert everything? And how is it that though they're doing that, though there's a fair amount of education, thankfully now, about covert narcissism, they're still getting away with literally and figuratively murder. Yes. Yes. And so you kind of saw some of the double minded things going on, right? When they come home and they're a completely different person, then you're out with them and you see how they're just like schmoozing and wheeling and dealing, whining and dining everybody. And that's when you're kind of like, who am I living with? Who am I dealing? Who am I dealing with? Exactly. Mm -hmm. The level of multiplicity of persona. So it's off the charts. It's not just, okay, there's like a public persona and there's one. What I discovered was sort of infinite personas that's amplified by technology. So as I was coming into this awareness, (laughs) yes, social media was... Excuse me, Kathy, and everybody for keeping sipping on this. My allergies are so bad and I don't want to cough. So, and I, you guys know I'm I'm on this crazy diet, so I have my jug of water. So I'm not being rude, but I just don't want to cough in the mics. That's why I keep sipping on it. No worries, Trace. It's good to keep, um, you know, water flowing when you're talking about narcissists. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. And so I just started to see more and more that they are masters of essentially taking a moment by moment inventory for decades on how to impersonate a real person so that they're a kind of AI even is how I think of them. Artificial intelligence, observing, very observant when they want something, how to take on many characteristics. So many covert narcissists, especially with cell phones and texting and social media, have like 20, 30, 40 pages that are different aspects of identity that they're exploring. I mean, it's it sounds exhausting for them. It may be exhausting in a certain way, but it's tremendously energizing, which I think is part of why there's so very many coverts is yep. that all this technology and not to knock technology, it's neutral. There's so many wonders in it, but the way they manipulate it is unprecedented. It's so true. And speaking of which, don't let me forget everybody to, um, to remind everyone before we, we end the show, um, of your Instagram handle. And we don't, we were talking about Instagram just before we came on here, but, but for now, that's where people can find a lot of your work about narcissism. So we'll make sure people have that. I'm going to say it right now for those of you that might jump off early. Her uh, handle on Instagram is Narcissist Remedy. That's where you can find Kathy's awesome information about narcissism. But I'll say it again at the end. But yes, yes. The What is up with that? Why do they sit? I mean, do they sit around as like, this is like a playground for them all day, every day. And like you said, it's like they have, I mean, multiple personalities isn't even the words for it. That's not even. It's almost like they have a card catalog of ways to behave, to meet whatever their need is in the moment. And because so many of their needs are actually pathological, so it's not just that they're needy, right, and they need supply, but it's that their actual need is really, like, it's not functional in any way. 
And so as a result, they have to kind of utilize all these sort of notes that they've taken mostly instinctively. So while many are premeditated, a lot of the way they collect information is, and that's why I liken them to AI, is almost like scanning for information. They're always scanning to figure out what it should look like to behave a certain way to get a particular need met. So they'll literally do anything. I mean, seriously, that's part of why they're so dangerous. And because, you know, a healthy human brain is designed for shortcuts, it is just how we're made. So we attribute good intention to people. We attribute that people are goal-oriented, problem solving, look for win-wins, and actually narcissists are none of those things. So what humans do, and they know that normal people or healthy people do this, is fill in the blanks of their dysfunction by projecting normalcy, which is a lot of why people end up staying with them longer because you think you can't possibly be this nuts and this devious and this manipulative and you probably were having a bad day. And you know, sometimes people are, but in the case of a true narcissist and sociopath, this is, you know, a day in the life. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, so you, like a lot of people I know, um, I could say a lot more, but I can't, um, you have been around this since you were born and, and this is around the time, like we were talking about this, we get to our age and we start putting everything together of the fact that they're all acting the same. And, and even if there's little micro versions of their behaviors, pretty much it's like the same spirit that's inside a covert narcissist. Am I correct? Like it's the same yeah. spirit. And that yeah. spirit is just doing the same things over and over and over again. Like take us out of the picture, insert new person. Uh, like you said, all the, all the businesses, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, <laughs> entre entrepreneur, entrepreneur, like you and I have laughed about this, but it is what, I mean, they, they have, I don't think they have an identity. There's no identity there. So they're, they're picking up, like you said, little traces of them throughout the people they meet. Yeah. I mean, they are like, I liken them to going to a flea market and picking up like a lot of items and then creating your whole decor. I mean, that's a really fun thing to do, but they literally went to a flea market, you know, <laughs> they, they really did. And some of them, for example, excel at certain things. So they might be, you know, for example, like a really great dancer, let's say. And so it's not that they don't have areas of specialty or expertise, right? But they would drop that in a hot minute if they had a need to secure someone, let's say, who wasn't interested in dance, they would pick up the flute. I have to laugh because you're so accurate. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. It's, and it's totally different from somebody like, let's say that we've, we've studied like the, um, neurodivergent person who has a hard time because they were abused finishing projects. This is a different beast we're talking about here. Like you said, like they'll just, they'll be, they'll be into something for like 30 years and be like, no, nah, that's, that's enough of that. And then they're turning around and it, they're into something. They're a completely different person. Yeah. I mean, I think the emphasis on the word beast, the motivation for them is largely to win, right? To in a way survive, but it's more really to take over and dominate. And so everything they do is designed to do that. And one of the best ways to allow people to let you dominate them is to play the victim or to play the nice guy. So the way 
I, those are two of the primary ways. They have multiple major masks they use, but in terms of like two big categories, I would say the victim, the nice guy are so powerful because again, healthy human brains are taught, like if someone appears over the course of a few times you're meeting them, a year, two years, to be like a nice person or they've been through a lot, you take that seriously. But right. they're literally using that to reel you in to get something. And it's remarkable to me how long they can fool people oh. and how many people they can fool. You know, it reminds me of a client of mine that I had who, this was several years ago, um, exactly what you're describing. I mean, she was with this man for 40 something years, married to him, with him for almost 50 years altogether, had no, no clue that he was leading a double life the entire time. And we're talking, um, engaging in, um, bisexual activities and, and, and all kinds of things that would make your head completely spin. I mean, imagine not having a clue for that many, but th this goes to your point of saying, and that's why we have to educate people around this because there were things she missed along the way. And we, we got to those through sessions, but in, in the gist of things, we're not walking around thinking this about people and they're so good at it to be able to go. I mean, that was an extreme case, but it happens. It happens. It happens all the time. Part of why they're so super good at it is the main person they're trying to convince they're the good guy, they're the dancer, they're the victim is themselves. Yes. So part of why they pass lie detector tests is while they're not psychotic, they are delusional, even though they know it's not real. So they're delusional in the sense that they allow themselves to go with a lie, whereas most people would sort of be like, okay, this isn't really true. Like I need to, you know, get real. They will go with it. And that convinces people. I mean, they're right. they're thoroughly immersed in the identity. It's part of why the discard, which happens, you know, it can happen 10 times in a conversation in micro ways, and it can happen multiple times in the course of a relationship is so often on. It's like they're on and then they're off because they have a different need when they're discarding. So now they just flip the switch to the protocol, the script that they use to meet the new need. The, yes. the last person I was with, one of the last things I said to him, because I fully knew that he was a narcissist. And in fact, we were, this is pretty funny, writing a book about it. Ha ha. He was performing, writing the book. Oh, they'll give you information. They'll give you great information about themselves, but all this. Yeah. Is like, yeah. Exactly. Well, he was also looking to be the special narcissist, but I literally said to him the day of the discard, oh, so you're going to start your new cycle to meet your new set of needs because you got everything you could from me. And he didn't even push back. I, I actually, and by the way, I wouldn't recommend confronting someone in the way that I did. I've, I've paid quite a price as Trace knows for that. But he did not push back on that. And I even told him that he's a fraud and he didn't push back. So I do believe that it's a, should be a criminal offense and it's friendship, life, sex, and love fraud. You know, there, there's criminal consequences for catfishing, covert narcissism, really any form of narcissism is sort of basically the same thing. And it's all a fraudulent operation. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, it should be a crime. It is a crime. It is it's a, a crime. crime. It's a crime. And more than emotionally, because you're wasting time, you're thinking that the relationship is one thing and it's another thing. And so I always say like, well, no, when we're living in a much healthier society, when we really do make it a crime and make it very clear that people can't get away with this. Amen. Yes, absolutely. You and I were talking about, uh, 
these specific types too out there, we, we can see you and I were talking about how we can see that there's been obviously some type of switch that has happened on this planet, right? To the point where we've got people out here. We were talking about what you had brought this up to me. Like they're not necessarily narcissists, but these people are just, they're not listening. They don't care. There's some type of disconnect going on with human beings nowadays. That's just, you, we can't ignore it. I know people out there are, are listening to this right now going, yeah, I, I feel it too. Like what is happening to human beings? What is Whoa. going on out there? Is And have you noticed it since the pandemic too? I've noticed it deepen since the pandemic. I started to really become aware of it around 2000 when we got more into the personal cell phone. And so I think that, and again, not to knock technology, I do think it's an amazing tool. I just think that as humans, we almost need training on how to deal with it and some limits around it. So I think that technology- Yeah, there's something not normal about it. There's something absolutely not yeah. normal about that at all. I mean, yeah. that we have to be glued to it. We have to answer it right away. I mean, that in itself is making people nuts, but- yeah, but to your point, keep going. I think that's exactly right, Trace. I think that when you can customize your world, whether you're a narcissist or you're not a narcissist, to your whims and you don't have to sort of join the social contract, you know, in any regular basis and then the hybrid workplace. And again, not to knock it, there's great things about it. I advocate with clients for that. But when you're living in some ways in a virtual world, you become disembodied and, you know, we're in bodies as we know. And so living in this sort of disembodied state, even if you're not a narcissist, can cause anyone to be at least a little narcissistic, a little over-focused on one's own needs, especially in a world that's very challenging now for many reasons. People are overwhelmed. I think they're our nervous systems are somewhat fried from everything going on. And I think it pushes us towards the narcissistic culture. And I actually think one of the dangers of it is that narcissists then stick out less because yep. there's, Bingo. Bingo. Right? there's like yes. a narcissistic ocean we're all swimming in. And so then how do you manage that? And Trace, as you and I have talked about, you know, we both really believe fundamentally it's a spiritual disorder. I, I see narcissists as having a spiritual dislocation. And we don't yet know how to put, if you will, the joint back in. And so therapy doesn't do it. You know, maybe we'll talk therapy worsens it a lot. Yeah. 12 yep. step groups worsen it a lot. Group therapy, individual therapy, the sort of Tony Robbins human potential, you know, entrepreneurship can worsen it, charity work, like all of those things that, you know, for people that are healthy can deepen their lives. Narcissists are able to weaponize them so that they can better convince themselves and others that they're not soul dislocated. Because trust me, with the research I've done, they absolutely know that something is deeply wrong with themselves, even Amen. when they're grandiose. Yes. And you brought, you raised a really great point about like, look at how many of them hide in this community. They are everywhere. They are watching this right now. They will be contacting you for sessions, me for sessions. They are, uh, they're hiding out like we talked about in AA and charity groups. And you, you are the one that would like got me to really think about this, like how they're, they, they find the help, the helping groups, and they want to be a part of it, you know, and, and for all the wrong reasons, and nobody knows this, they think they're, they're another victim of this. And, and this is where they hide, right? The church, you know, and. Absolutely. They are a corrupting force that is not revealed to be such. And it's, it, what's incredible is even with all the talk, 
that we have in the culture, how they're getting away with it. And part of it is that they co-opt these groups. So for example, take 12 step or AA. So AA is a particular area of my expertise in looking in detail at what happens there. And, and by the way, not everyone in AA or in 12 step are narcissists. Right. Many people are helped. That's part of what's so sad about it. But some of the sort of phrases in AA, like I'm a work in progress. I had that weaponized against me by many narcissists. Like, oh, well, we all make mistakes. Well, that's a truism. We all can grow. Actually, that's not true. I mean, they can grow worse, but we don't yet have a way for them to improve. So they they take things, for example, like the amends process. The amends process in the hands of a narcissist to me is nothing short of evil. Yep. They use it to contact old supply and restart relationships. They use it to essentially have like a angry army that will defend their behavior and they'll use as flying monkeys to convince could be hundreds or even more than hundreds of people in the AA network that their partner, people close to them is crazy and they get validated for it. Yep. Yep. Yes. And not called out and it's peer run, which in some ways is great, but I don't think it's a realistic structure at this point for 12 step because there's no real way to unmask them. And I know narcissists who've been in AA literally for 30 years, manipulating people with an endless stream of supply. I mean, it never yes. there's always people in 12 yes. steps. Yes. It's so sad. You know, I, I remember I had gone for help probably this is back in 2014. Um, one of the many times and, but this was the first time I decided to go to AA and I was in it for a while. And then, uh, I noticed that I happened to be one of the only females in the group. So I kind of felt weird about that, but then it was when <laughs> one of them was like, you, you've got, you know, you got to, who's going to be your sponsor? And it, it's got to be a female and we got to find you a female. And it just wouldn't. And then it was just like, you got to go to these meetings and you should go to that meeting and you should be at this meeting. And then it was, where do you work? They wanted to know where I worked. It was like, this is supposed to be anonymous, alcoholics, anonymous, like, like, you know, and, um, yeah, I, I felt the cult. I felt that it was, there was a cult now, like, to, to what you were saying, I know some people that are in it and have been in it and God bless them. They found a good group and they're not dealing with any of this, but unfortunately I dealt with it. I, I got the heck out of there. I was scared. I was like, no, no, this don't feel, this doesn't feel like, like help. They, they can be terrorizing and they can yeah. become worse terrorists in it. I think cult leaders, you know, and hiding behind false humility and doing the steps and how courageous that they're doing it. I mean, I actually had one, one of my exes told, I heard it. So I know he wasn't making this up because I was waiting outside the group and the sound traveled that how brave of him to admit he was an abuser, how wonderful. And he got a series of applause for that. And that is not an infrequent occurrence mm -hmm. at AA. So it's, you know, we have in the last hundred years or so created all of these mechanisms, some of which, as you said, have like really good aspects to them that narcissists take and they just slingshot them back. They're really able to create damage from anything, including good things. They're alchemists of damage yeah. and destruction. And one ex of mine called himself a destroyer. He actually was able to name that that's really who he was. 
And he would tell me that and then go to AA and be making arrangements to shovel the snow off of lonely women's driveways. And how generous is he? He comes early to make the coffee and everyone loves it. And I think, you know, this is just total fraud. And part of what we have to do to shift this is for kind of the rest of us to be willing to see through it. And that's painful. Because yes. when you accept that we all can be fooled, and even me, you know, I've been working around this for decades, and I still have people at times get through my radar. It's vulnerable to right. accept that, but without accepting it, we can't fully limit their damage and really come together to create justice, which isn't revenge very different process. I'm not a fan of revenge. I really do take a spiritual view of this and want the greater good for all. But for a narcissist who's committing fraud, I, I think part of the greater good is they'd be prevented from doing that. And we really have to step up. Um, I think we've lost my video. Chase. Oh, I'm back. Um, oh, oh, no. And I didn't lose you. I didn't lose you on my end. But. Oh, good. Um, but we really have to step up and come together. There are so many brilliant people like you and your viewers and listeners out there and really brainstorm around how we handle this. We're never going to sort of get rid of narcissists. It's about managing the damage and the destruction that they do and not allowing the clown show, which is really a light way to talk about what they do. I mean, they, they do kill people both literally, emotionally, and spiritually and create damage that you, know, you can recover in many ways and most people do, but it's really bitter and hard to do that. And I'm always a fan of making things a little bit easier, even the hard things. And I think it requires like a community response, even beyond the amazing education work that's happening. Yes. Amen to that. And yeah, just, just to get, to gather to your point, it's like, we, we really do. I mean, the conversations I continue to have with people around this are so enlightening and empowering to be able to understand like, okay, you saw that too. Like just some of the points you've, you've mentioned today. Like I, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. You know, and, and, and also to, to, to get to your point about how the coverts are, that that'll be something. Um, how do I say this? The coverts will leave scars that you will be sitting there pondering three years later. Was that part of him good or was it all an act? All an act. I mean, you will be scratching your head. Am I right? You I, was it was it you I was talking about this with this week? Somebody I was talking about like do we think that there were some parts of them that may have been good, like in there, you know, and, and are those the parts that we were really holding on to, like with dear life, you know, for dear life? I, I, that is the part I think that will, will always sort of be a mystery for some of them. Um, how far did they go with the fraudulent act, you know? And I think that's the part that's, that's really hard to, to grasp and, and to, and to like break down. It's so hard trace. And I think part of the answer as you're alluding to is you can never know. And even if you somehow were able to interview them now and ask them, they would probably say, yeah, it was real because they were in a delusional process of trying to convince themselves of a reality. So you're getting like a watered down version of humanity. Here's a piece of good news though. I just like to share good news. We're living in a world that is more and more virtual and filled with artificial intelligence. And people who have survived and dealt with and sorted narcissistic abuse, really are on the vanguard of discerning truth from lies, 
good from bad, good from evil, what really happened, what didn't. Like we have had training that many people don't have yet. So how are they going to discern like AI even beyond the narcissistic context? So I do think on a spiritual level, even though I wish we all didn't have to suffer, I think this was sort of meant to be in the sense that we are getting brought to a higher level of spiritual and self-leadership in understanding who we really are and who we're not and who they really are and who they aren't and what's true and what's not true. And to me, that's the ultimate narcissist remedy because really what they try to take away is the sacred and they try to make everything yes. profane and pornified. Yes. And, and perverted. Like you used the word earlier. Perverted. Yes. Ultimately the truth is beautiful. It is processed. It is not rigid. We think sometimes truth is rigid. It isn't, right? There's multiple ways to see things, but not, you know, something that you can distort at every turn. And so I think that they're in a way like a mechanism to train humanity. I, I, I wish it weren't through such horrifying pain. Right. But right. nevertheless, to train us to ultimately be more free, be more able to see ourselves and others with open eyes, with open hearts, because really what they're dealing with isn't even just a closed heart, but it's, it's like, it's not there. There's like no there, there. They're really like a simulation of a human heart of empathy, of understanding, and they're darn good at that simulation. But people who have dealt with them become darn good at discerning that it was a simulation, as excruciating as that is. I just just have I just figured out the title for this this video. <laughs> A simulation of their heart, of, of a heart. Oh man, Kathy. Wow. I mean, yeah, you're, uh, you really get it. And again, as you guys are watching, this comes from a person that has been around this her entire life. You, this is you, you grew up around this, uh, the stories that you have. I think you should write a book about all that if, and when you're ever ready, because, it's incredible to me who you've turned out to be in considering everything that has happened to you and in, in life and like how you took all of that and said, you know what? It's not going down like that. Like I'm going to go and make something of myself. You started your own business at such a young age. I mean, you're somebody to look up to and you talk about leadership. You're somebody to look up to for that. I mean, that's, you know, you have, a, and you have a lot of, I, I'm sure as you guys can see, like you could keep going and going and it's, it's so interesting because of how well you get it and how you word it. Um, you can just tell that you just, you really understand, Hey, what's your take? What is your take by the way, as we're talking about this, um, and we're, we're discussing about how they, you know, these, these groups aren't going to help them. Counseling isn't going to help them. The thing you put together for your, your business at one point, you realize that that is just, it's, it, it becomes a joke in all actuality. So what is your take on all this, this, um, new move of, uh, self-proclaimed narcissists coming on the scenes and, and talking about and helping people and people are literally paying them for sessions. What's your take on that? I'm, I'm interested to hear. We never talked about this. So I'm wondering what you think about that. Well, what's interesting is with one of my exes, the one where I was developing this sort of rehabilitation in my work and working with him around it. I didn't know the term self-aware narcissist, 
But one of the things that I did in our process was I knew I had to find something that was in it for him. And so I said, you know, you can do videos. I mean, listen, I never should have said that. I'm sure he's doing videos like crazy now, but who knows? I don't follow him. Um, you know, you can do videos. You can get some of your supply from helping people. And, you know, I wish I could erase that. Ultimately, you know, I don't know those individuals personally. I know them from online, just their presence. And I would say, can they do some good? I mean, it, it's sort of like saying, did Steve Jobs do good with right. the iPhone? He did, but he likely was a just intense sociopath, at right. least potentially. So can they do good in the moment? Are there people who you know, get information and tools. Yes. Do I think that it's not hinky what's going on to use a very retro term? There's not some funny business. Can they maintain it? I mean, I certainly hope they can. If they are a true narcissist, then I would say I'm more suspicious if they're on the spectrum. So we didn't talk trace that much about, but I know you and I have talked about narcissistic features doesn't mean that you're literally missing the internal psychological spiritual machinery and you're a black hole on a soul level so i suspect they may not be that and they're just higher on the features of what i do think is potentially dangerous to a degree with them is I've seen in the comment section around some of them that it gives people hope yes. that they can be worked with. I actually went with my ex to a therapist who was claiming he's well known, um, claiming he was rehabilitating narcissists and the work he did with us absolutely was weaponized by my ex. It was very damaging. Yes. He allowed my ex to triangulate us. I mean, you cannot go to therapy. You can't do couples counseling. You can't do any, they, they triangulate. I mean, anything that is walking or talking, they're going to triangulate. And even if it's not walking or talking, they triangulate phones, houses, like it doesn't matter. It's anything that creates a third relationship for them to leverage energy. So I think it's ironic that these folks may do some good, like in at least the short and medium term, but in the long term, I do have concerns and I wonder, you know, what's really going to happen to them if they're really full blown arcs. Because one thing I know is yeah. that narcissists can maintain long cons. They can do cons for years and people underestimate, for example, another narcissist, not the one I've been referring to, contacted me after 23 years, several years ago. And I would never have known I was in a relationship with a narcissist, you know, 23 years before, unless he contacted me and he wasn't drop dead bonkers. It was clear. Mm -hmm. You know, so they really can maintain that. So I think the jury is out. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, no, I 100% agree with you. And it's, it's like you said, it's like, it's like, I, when, when they want to come on the scenes and they, and, and people want to pay them to get information, it's like, to me, I, I said it years ago and it's like, I want to see your family. I want to see your friends. I want to see the people that you really are around on a dated. -day. Those are the people I want to hear from. And even then, Kath, wouldn't you agree? These people are unfortunately probably so brainwashed at this point that they're buying into this horse crap too. I mean, I, I, you and I speak on behalf of, the targets and victims of this because we lived it. And in some instances we're still living it with, with certain individuals. And the, and the thing of it is, you know, that's, that's the level we, we are able to come at with this and they're, they're never going to be able to come at that level with someone. These are people that are coming on the scenes and telling everybody that they lack empathy. So why would it, that be like me paying a session to talk to Satan? 
<laughs> like, let me just pick your brain, Satan. Like, what did you mean all this time? You know, I mean, I just, I, I want people to be aware of who they are listening to. You're listening to a full-time fraud. And I just, you know, at one point I was going to, I was going to go and talk about this on another channel with some of these self-proclaimed narcissists. And it was almost going to be like, a, um, what do you call it? Uh, one of those like roasts or whatever, you know, cause it was going to turn into that, you know, with me on there, I can't hold back. Cause I, it's like, I would be on the stage with my enemies. Like you people cause so much damage to people like me and you and all of us in our life. Like how dare you have a platform and you pay and people pay you to, to, to help them. Like it's, it's sick. And I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I didn't do it. Cause it just probably would have derailed me in some regard. I'm, 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 I don't have any interest in giving them any more attention. Um, you know, enough is enough with them. Like <laughs> go I, away. I agree, Trace. And I think the savior complex and the good guy, like I don't we see a again. way for them to disrupt that. I thought in my rehabilitation program that if they performed goodness, at the end of the day, they would do less harm because at least if they, you know, forever faked it. And what I, <laughs> what I really miss underestimated is that they are having a response to the performance of goodness that's truly evil largely. And so there is no like taking and redirecting right. that and that it's feeding this thing. The other thing I just want to say is I think it feeds in people harmed by narcissists, something I have a great deal of empathy for, which is I think the most earth shattering thing on some level in dealing with a narcissist is the confrontation with evil and how it changes your worldview at the core of it. And I think that we hunger in some ways to rehabilitate our own worldview. I know that I have. And so I think seeing self-aware narcissists not only can feed like, oh, maybe my personal narcissist might not be off the deep end, but on a larger level that there's a worldview that, oh, it they could be okay somehow. They could turn this ship around. And I understand that hunger because when you're left with, you know, seeing the heart of darkness, you can... I don't know how you're ever the same, even if it doesn't turn you into a cynic. And I, I don't feel that I am a cynic, but I'm super, super realist. And I think that humans have a propensity for not being realist and for being hypnotized. And so I'm actually writing a piece for Medium. I'm also on Medium. I forgot to mention, I haven't published anything yet, but I'm working on a piece on how narcissist hypnotism is so powerful because even healthy humans, our brain is designed to be hypnotized. That's why we get lost on our phone. That's why we get lost in alcohol, in shopping, in drugs, and you name it, technology. And so I think that part of what we're being invited to do is to accept on some level that we can get lost and be hypnotized, but to be gently mindful and aware and try to nudge ourselves when we can away from the hypnotism into more connecting with ourselves. And that's part of what I work on with people around self-leadership. Like, how do you do that through connecting with your body, your morality, you know, your imagination, not in a narcissistic way, but in a creative way, your desire to produce and share good with the world. There's a sort of state of resisting this ocean of hypnosis that I think the self-aware narcissist can, whether wittingly or not, hook into. Amen. I love it. 
So such great information you've given everybody today, Kathy. Thank you so much. I always call you Kath. <laughs> it's not Kathy, it's Kath. <laughs> but I, um, guys, you can find more of her thoughts around this topic of narcissists and narcissism on her IG handle, which is the, which is narcissist remedy. And, uh, yeah, we don't know what's going on over there on Instagram. It's changed quite a bit, but, um, for right now, I know I, that's like probably the easiest, like social media where you can, you can put your thoughts. Cause you write a lot of memes, right? You do like your, your, yeah. And, and they're really good. You guys, you guys, it, it's a great place for you to go to get that support that you need around this stuff. And, um, and if you switch it around to something else, I'll let the channel know because <laughs> Instagram's getting weird. Facebook, weird. Instagram, they're getting weird and it's they're going to start, weird. they're going to start making people pay to be on there too. I think that's why they're shadow banning and making it so no one's seeing posts. So it forces you to pay. I don't have anything up on medium.com yet, oh, that's right. work on it, but I'm the same handle, I think. Um, I think it's narcissist remedy or the narcissist remedy on medium.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And guys, again, check out her book. Um, especially if you're out there right now, I have a lot of you I'm working with that are looking for jobs that are trying to, you know, get a handle on what's going on out there in this modern way of looking for, for work, putting together a resume and um, if you're interested in working with Kathy, please let me know so I can get you over to her um, because you do that as well and you do a lot of things. But thank you so much for helping everybody today because this is going to be super helpful for everybody to hear and, you know, like I said, get their, their hands on this information and understand what's going on. And um, yeah, I should, uh, so I'm going to also in the drop down menu, you guys, I'll put all of uh, Kathy's stuff so you can find her and, um, any last words for everyone before we say you goodbye? Know, first of all, to you, Trace, thank you so much for allowing me to share with you and just the conversation I learned today as well. And just to folks listening, like it, it, there is hope. And there are ways to work with the feelings and the sort of just destruction that the wrecking ball of the narcissist brings. And Trace is an amazing resource and just font of knowledge on that. And, you know, just even getting into nature and anything that slows things down, anything that connects you to the sacred, which is what a lot of their behaviors are designed to subvert is so, so powerful. And I just send good wishes and blessings trace to you and to everyone. And we're getting through this. And I think, you know, we are kind of advancing in our evolution as humanity, even though at the moment it's a bit of a mess. Yes. Um, I, I agree we, with you. We're getting through it. And the work around narcissism is one of the key ways that I think we're doing that. Amen. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank, Thank you. you everyone for listening. Any questions you have for Kath, I'll leave them in the comments, any commentary on, on what she's provided today, leave them in the comments down below for her. And, um, we will be back with some more fun information. Uh, as always, I'm Trace Face, and it is time that we face the truth together. Thank you, Kathy. Ha, ha, ha.